Hello again, Model Railroading fans. I'm coming to you this evening with an update on my 5x9 HO scale model railroad. Uh, this evening I do not have my tripod. I'm not entirely sure where it is. So you'll have to forgive me for all the shakiness of the camera and uh, for how bad some of the images might come out. Uh, just for those of you who are new to some of my videos, my layout schematics are basically this is or was originally a 4x8 sheet of plywood. The plywood came to about right around here and uh, didn't like it, it was too small. And I told myself, you know what, I think I just want to add a foot in its length and a foot in its width. So I went out and got some new cuts on it and now it's a 5x9 layout. It's much better layout gives you a lot more space, lets you do a lot more with uh, with the space that you have. Uh, these curves on the outside and the first set on the inside are the two main lines. Uh, they all have 22 inch radius curves on them. Most of the straight track is just your regular 9 inch straight track. Uh, I have several pieces of the smaller track uh, I believe they're four and a half inches. They're about this size. Then I also have a few of these little bitty pieces to go along with it. Uh, those, I didn't think I'd need them at first, but man, they come in handy. They sure do help with uh, connecting track, especially with this Bachman Easy Track. And that's all my layout is, is Bachman Easy Track. Uh, my crossovers right here. These are Bachman Easy Track. Uh, they are amazing crossovers. I absolutely love them. Uh, I have had a couple of derailments with them, but th those are so few and far between, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna have derailments with just about every kind of track that you use. Uh, a lot of people say they see more derailments with the Easy Track, and that is true. The Easy Track is a little bit finicky at times, but uh, it works for a budget. It also works, uh, I found this track a lot easier to keep together. Uh, the Atlas Code track, I find that I've got to solder my my rails sometimes. You have to get these special connectors. Uh, that may just be the experience I've had, maybe, uh, but I just didn't really care for Atlas track. It's a great track, but it's not for my layout, at least not at the moment. Uh, my turnouts are right here. I'm not sure what number they are. But as you see, let me get close, right here, none of the track is made to go uh, from this turnout. This is the turnout that has the straight piece instead of the curved. I have the curved turnouts, I just didn't like them. Uh, had to cut some of my track off right here for this to fit. The tracks that they sent me to go with it, it just it didn't work. Uh, they actually sent me some of those small pieces of track that I showed you earlier. Uh, these came with it. They're about, I'd say, two inches, maybe two and a half, I'm not sure. They came with it and they didn't have any notches cut out of them. Uh, so I didn't know what else to do other than to cut them. But as you can see, you have to get really close to even notice it. Uh, once I get my grass put in and I get some more features on here, you're not really gonna be able to tell much of a difference. Uh, but all of them are powered, crossovers and the uh, turnouts are powered. This turnout over here is actually powered and it's got a wire running all the way back to this area. This is my control station for all my turnouts and crossovers. This is really nice. I'm glad that Bachman made them like this where you can just swap any of them over and they're all connected and it helps keep them together. Uh, I am using a Bachman Easy Command DCC controller. Uh, it's actually really good. Uh, I like it for what it does. It doesn't put out as much power as it probably needs to for an HO scale layout. For in layouts, I've been told that it's just one of the best for the money. Uh, but I use it right now. I've only got three trains running. Uh, you can, I think you can see all of them, yeah. You can see all three of them right here. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to have for now. Maybe in the future I'll branch off something over here to hold a, over on this side, to hold a third train as kind of a holding area. 
our fourth train is a holding area. Uh, speaking of my trains, these are the kinds I have. This one right here is my uh, SD40-2. It's made by Kato. It was DCC ready when I got it and I put in the chip myself. It's really easy to put in on this engine. Uh, some of the engines may not be as easy as this one, but this one was simple. Uh, put it in and it was ready to run. Haven't had any problems out of it. Uh, the second engine is actually the first engine that I got since I started uh, the new layout. This is my 284 Berkshire. It is also DCC. Uh, that one was actually DCC equipped when I got it. And this third one is my most recent. Uh, it's made by Athern and it's called an AC 4400. Uh, I fell in love with it because of the colors. It goes really well with uh, the Crescent Limited cars that I have. Uh, it's a it says Southern on the side, so it's Southern Railroad. But it's a great engine. It is also DCC ready. I'm going to be taking it back to the fine folks at Oak Mountain Hobbies up in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm going to have them uh, equip it with the DCC chip. They said they could do that for me, and I'm very thankful for it. Uh, the other engines that are not on the track right now are right here. We have a Bachman 440, uh, and it's got four cars made by... I think it's Mantua. And then I have this Amtrak that's right beside it. Uh, both of these engines are analog only right now. Uh, and then it's carrying its three Amtrak cars. Uh, the only reason I'm not running them, the Amtrak runs fine. Uh, I just like this one. Uh, once I get the Southern DCC equipped, I may put the Amtrak back on the tracks and just have it as an analog. Uh, one of the reasons I don't like is because when the analog engines are on the tracks, if they're not DCC equipped, they just make this terrible humming noise that I just can't stand. I mean, some people look past it. Some people may even think, oh, it sounds like the train's running. Well, to me, it just gets on my nerves. Uh, and this 440, it's a great engine. That was the or original engine that I bought to uh, build my layout around, but for one, uh, it is a much smaller engine. I like the bigger engines. Uh, I thought I was gonna like this one, but it just turned out to be too small for me. But it runs great. Uh, I've tested out on Atlas track before and it has no problem. On this Bachman Easy track, there's just certain spots, when, it, especially when it comes to crossovers, where it fails. Uh, It'll lose power, it just won't run anymore, and the lights will stay on, but it'll just stay stationary. If I just hooked it up and put it on a on this 5x8, probably kept it on the outside main lines, it would run like a breeze, no problems. And it can actually pull a good amount. Uh, I'll get to that later in this video. Uh, anyway, the types of, types of cars that I'm using, uh, Right here on the Southern, I've got Crescent, let's see if I can get it close enough to you. Crescent Limited Cars made by Concorp. I've got the luggage or baggage car, and then I've got three uh, regular passenger cars, I guess they're called sleeper cars, and I've got one obs observatory car. Let's see if I can actually bring it around uh, for a better view. I've only got it at about 20% power, that's why it's going so slow. Uh, <coughs> but here it is. You got the baggage car. Move it up to about 25-30%. The three regular passenger cars. And then you got the observatory car. These are all made by Concor. They are not heavyweight cars uh, got them for Christmas they're a really good deal they look great on the track I'm thinking about upgrading the wheels on them at some point uh, putting some metal wheels on them and maybe adding some weight to the cars just because uh, you can't really tell but I can move them back and forth pretty easy they don't have too much weight on them uh, 
But that's that train. The next set of cars I have is on my Berkshire. Let's see if I can power that up and bring it over here. All right, made sure the switch is thrown in the right direction. And here comes my Berkshire. Berkshire is carrying five Atlantic Coastline cars that took me forever to find. Uh, these cars are out of production now. Uh, I'll stop it right here so I can get a close up of it. They're detailed really well and for the price that I paid for them, they're, I mean you just can't beat it. The first three I got down in Pensacola uh, at Trains by Johnson, which if you get a chance to go to that store, it's a great train store. Uh, as you can see, they don't have the uh, seats in them. But to me, that's a small price to pay, not having seats in the cars <laughs> to get cars that look this well, this good. Uh, let me move it forward just a little bit. Let me get this car off. These, like I said, these are my favorite cars right now. They have uh, six axles on them. And they're very, very nicely weighted. I mean, I just absolutely love these cars. I can't say enough about them. Uh, but I got, like I said, three of them I got down at Trains by Johnson. And the other two I found online, luckily, uh, from another provider up in New York. It isn't Klein. It's another one. I can't remember, though. Uh, let me send this one on around. And then I guess the last type of cars I have are the ones that are on my SD40-2. Uh, once the Berkshire gets around, I'll bring this one around. <coughs> Let's see. I think I might have it off the tracks, actually. Let me put this down for a moment. All right, let's see if I can get this engine powered up for you. One of the great things about Bachman is that I actually don't have to, or the Easy Track, I don't actually have to uh, adjust the switch. So you can see right before the uh, SD40-2 comes, the turnout right here is actually faced the other way. Uh, I spoke to someone at a train store here recently. He said he actually won't mess them up. Uh, he runs a lot of his turnouts this way. That way he doesn't have to have pay extra to get a wire run all the way over there. And for this easy track, those wires run anywhere from 10 to $20, depending on how long you get them. But uh, power it up. And you can take it at any speed. It just pushes it out of the way and keeps on coming. And once again, I'm running these uh, a little bit slower than usual just so you can get a look at some of the detail. Guess we'll start from the back. This is a Burlington Northern uh, caboose. I'm trying to think of who made it. I'm pretty sure Bachman made it. I know that whoever made this one also made the cars that look like this. These are log cars. Every bit of this train is just heavy, heavy, heavy. River Rossi made these. Uh, these come in a two-pack. They're skeleton log cars. These logs are more plasticky. These logs are actually pretty much wood. I mean, they're really nice. Um, I like them both. I couldn't decide which one to get more of, so I've just kind of staggered it. While they do run a little bit expensive, the quality of the cars is just top-notch. Uh, not sure if you can see it that well, 
but they actually do have the metal wheels on them. Uh, magnetic couplers, I love the couplers on these things. The detail on these cars is just ridiculous. And you can see these little chains right here where my finger is. Those are actually little metal chains that uh, they're a pain to put on, but they add a lot of detail to the engines. Uh, so I really like them. River Rossi Bachman, Kato for the engine. I mean, this is just one of my favorite engines. I really want to add more to it now that my layout is bigger. I uh, may add one or two more of the cars uh, depending on budget because, like I said, they are pretty expensive. Uh, I'll go ahead and send this one around just so you can see. Hopefully, we will have a smooth transition over here. It's going into the turnout right now. Oops, sorry about that. Got a little bit blurry. Let me go ahead and bump up the speed just a little bit. The lights are LED lights. They're extremely bright. This engine is just, like I said, it's one of my favorites. Uh, we'll go ahead and let that one keep running on its little loop. Uh, now I'm gonna jump to some questions. I've, I've been on uh, cs.trains.com on their model railroading forum. Uh, let me go ahead and start up. We'll start the Southern just so you guys can see it run while the other one's running. Oh, I love that. These two engines are just wonderful engines. Uh, anyway, I've been on cs.com or cs.trains.com and uh, there have been a bunch of questions asked on there. I figured that I'd try to answer some with this video. Uh, first off, can a 284 Berkshire run on 18 inch radius curves? And to answer that question, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys no, not very well. Uh, that's for another video. I really don't want to derail my Berkshire. It can make it through the curves. They'll be really, really tight depending on what kind of uh, engine you have. As a matter of fact, uh, they're very, I think the Berkshire may be one of the only engines that has eight wheels. Uh, in the middle they can actually take the 22 curves I had a 484 I can't remember what kind of engine it was uh, I think it might have been a Southern Pacific anyway had that engine put it on these tracks and it just flew off the tracks 22 inch curves on the outside and it just it flew off so I was not very happy with that but the Berkshire over here can definitely run on the uh, on the 22 inch curves but not the not anything any smaller without having problems uh, can the six axle trains run on 18 inch uh, radius curves well that's a no brainer this one right here is having no problem taking them uh, every time you see it it goes on this middle track right here those are 18 inch radius curves so as you can see the SD40-2 takes them, no problem at all. It's just going through it. Uh, the next question I saw was, how much weight can a 440 carry? And well, it can carry a good bit. Uh, there's a video I have already posted if you want to check my channel, uh, where my 440, this one right here, actually carries I'm pretty sure every car on my layout. Oh, sorry about the blurriness again. I put it too close. Uh, so they can carry quite a bit. Uh, I would never really doubt that engine. Uh, I just have it with those cars because it looks great. Um, let's see, next question that I saw. Do trains lose power when running multiple engines? Yes and no. Uh, it depends on how many you're running. Uh, let me do this for example. We're going to back up the Burlington Northern. I'm going to leave it parked right here. I'm going to start up the Berkshire. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, uh, if you can hear it that well, but 
uh, my southern train on the outside loop, it actually did slow down just a hair. I mean, not enough to really make a noticeable impression, but it did slow down just enough that you could hear it. Uh, so it does drain a little bit of power. Now, if I was to start up the Kato right now, then you would definitely notice a uh, drain. Let's see, if I turn this one up, go over 10, try to turn it up. It does take more power. I mean, it's, it's a simple answer. It does take more. Uh, so I don't have to keep running on this video. I realize I'm on 20 minutes now. Uh, let me jump to this one. What about the new 462 Pacific engines made by Broadway Limited? Uh, this was a long post on there. Let me just go ahead and tell you, these engines are going to be great. Uh, they're in short supply, as most are. Broadway Limited makes a great product. I don't personally own any yet because of the price of the engines, but I plan on owning them soon. Uh, the 462 Pacifics are the ones that just came out. They can run on 18-inch radius curves without a problem. Uh, someone even said that they could hit 15-inch radius curves. I don't know. Uh, I know that the Mikados can. I think those are 282s. I know that those can, the light and heavy ones. Uh, but I'm not sure about these new Pacifics. They can carry a great amount of weight. The ones that I saw were carrying 10 to 15 passenger cars and they were heavyweight cars. Really nice engines. Uh, the one that I plan on getting uh, more than likely will be my next engine. It's going to be the Reading Railroad one. Uh, so, as usual, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, especially for my layout, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, I guess I'll just let you guys see a little bit more of the layout. Uh, for the future, I'm probably going to keep the station right here where it is, get a different station. Uh, there's a crossing, well, really a power station power truck right there but it's gonna be a crossing track and I'm gonna have a road coming out from there and then we're gonna have some houses some trees some grass some fun stuff uh, I did want to show you guys one more thing before I sign off with this video I'm gonna have to call some of my trains in okay we're gonna park that one there uh, one of the questions that I remember seeing was uh, can the these passenger cars, which I'm not entirely sure what the length of them are, but uh, if you go to modeltrainstuff.com you can find them. There's some of the top on the page when listed price, lowest to highest. Alright. One of the questions was about cars this long. What kind of curves can they handle? Well, I'm about to show you. I want to back this one up. Once again, have all my power to my tracks right there. Oh, didn't back them up far enough. There we go. Uh, and that's an awesome thing. This uh, switch will throw a short and help you uh, locate it. So I love that about it. But. We're going to go ahead and switch over to the analog and send it on across. Now it's going to cross over right here. And we're going to follow it. Keep in mind the curves on the inside are 18 inch. We've got it running around uh, 25, 30 on the speed. I'm going to stop right there just because the Burlington Northern log train is right here. But as you can see, uh, these cars are a little bit different. Uh, it does look a little bit awkward at times like that. But the point is, these cars can definitely be run across 18-inch curves. But I'm going to go ahead and play conductor just for a couple more minutes, let you guys see some of the great features of the controller get to control multiple trains at once
And there we go. All my trains are parked for the evening. Got those. There they are. One more train and I'll be able to make a full loop with my trains back to back. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I know it's a long video. If you have questions, comments, suggestions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help answer them with anything that I know. And if I don't know it, I'll look it up and try to get back to you. Uh, anyway, hope you have a great night. Thanks for watching.